If someone's listening to music, does that mean somebody's here? Really good pipe, but not as good as my thing. that close. Fuck all these assholes. Torturing people already. Helmet. Helmet guys are a little bit... Oh, if we can release the infected. Um... <laughs> this is fine. This is fine. Six shot. Wow, you got me through the crack. Oh, God damn it. Oh, oh. Don't let up. Gotcha. Do you mind not getting me if I let you go? Do you mind getting someone else? Oh, waste of time. Oh my god. Remember, we're not dying here today. Let's not die here. Oh jeez. It's nowhere near the level of pain that you've been inflicting on these people, though. And just as a reminder, if we ever want to use the infected, we can't be in their view of sight before releasing them. Hey there, friend. I think those are probably infected, too. Where are you? There's still more. I'm wondering if I can see you through the crack. Maybe not. Where are you? Maybe I'll use an arrow. We've got plenty of those. Yeah, so arrows don't work on the helmets either. Oh, there's a lot more people than I thought. Hold on.
In this case, it might be worth if I tried freeing the infected. She uses. There's even a clicker here. That's scary. Are they gonna know to go after the right one? I gotta let them both. Oh, you see the person already. Oh, why are you coming here? That was silly. I was trying to climb up. Still gonna try it again though. Maybe if I move a little bit slower. Oh, they're both clickers. You know what? In that case, it might be a little bit too dangerous to make use of them. Why don't we kill the people normally then? I thought one of them was a runner, but no, they're both... Clickers. If we get them from behind, maybe it's okay. I mean, in terms of not having to account for their helmet. We all happy? Do I need to care about you? Maybe not. Yeah. Hmm. I do want you guys to stop making noise, but... Whoa! That was scary. Thank you. The submachine gun is really opening up a lot of possibilities for faster stealth though. I really like it so far. But the music is probably never gonna stop until I get the clickers. Oh! Oh, okay. Who the fuck? What have you been doing? Just wandering around? You have a helmet, so I'd rather you come over. No wonder they gave me the submachine gun. There's nothing here. I put that right in front of myself. Oh my god. Hit the table corner. That's okay. I'll grab him when he comes around. Come on, buddy. Oh my gosh. Oh, there's more guys. Even this guy is not the last guy. How long were they keeping people on a leash that they became clickers? I can't imagine that they... would have a clicker. Like, I can't imagine that they would have a clicker first and then try to imprison it, right? I don't know, man. These people are pretty... weird. Someone got wet! We got company! Look everywhere, go!
Now I got you. I think there's one more person in the back. Oh, hello. Now, what you do? That was a miracle. There's still more. They're all congregating here. Like they know something's gonna happen. Shit. Where were you all when your friends were getting killed outside? Very nice try. If I do say so myself. <sighs> Fuck. Anybody else? Ignore the clickers. Come on. Don't stop now. Ellie. <sighs> Ellie, I don't even know what to do with you. You're clearly not doing well. We just still want to push. It doesn't even make sense anymore. Not that it ever did, because if you really want the maximum chance of killing Abby, you gotta make sure you're doing good too. How are you gonna kill her if you're half dead by the time she gets there? Last time you weren't even half dead, and she still beat you up. What's gonna happen this time? Locked up. I want that brick. Thanks. If I throw a brick at you, just for science, they get stunned. Hey, where was the other brick? I saw one just now. Here. Yeah, okay. I'm not here for you guys today. Sorry. I'll just be going now. Probably not too much else around here. Canister? I've got too much canister, but I also have a lot of smoke bombs and trap mines. Goodness. Hey, earlier, this weapon, it killed the guy in one hit. So maybe that kind of thing depends on the weapon type too. Because this one seems a lot more sharp. <sighs> Suddenly got scared. Sounded like a lot of people were here. Okay. Got a lot. I've got full everything. I need to shoot one more arrow. Hmm. Oh, got so much. For Ellie, it always feels like I have more supplies. Wait, there are people here. <laughs> what a dummy. If you're gonna come down in pairs, do it quicker. Where are you even going?
That's it. Your weapon's even better. Since we have such an excess of materials, I feel like we should probably just upgrade this. And then was there tape back here? Where was that tape? Well, it's okay. I'm sure we'll find more. Oh! There we go. And then back out here, it was just this place. Thank you. We're doing good. Haven't used a rifle for a while, but it's really good for sniping. But I'll go back to the bow for now. Anybody else want a taste of this? Rattler's letter home. Oh, we're in combat right now, so they don't really want me to read it, but I will. Jenny, sending along some extra beef, grapefruit, and potatoes I just got. They've been impressed with how many strays I've captured and wanted to reward me. We're seeing the best crop we've had since we settled here. Please make sure my mom gets fatty cuts. She looked too skinny the last time I saw her. Pat. Yeah, they're capturing people to work on their crops. It sounds like this person's bought into the system, though. They're capturing strays. Well, it's not like they really have a choice. The commonality between the fireflies, the wolves, the rattlers, all these groups is that everyone ends up living under fear. These people all have proper beds and all, too. They're living the life. Maybe not this guy. This guy I shot earlier. His body disappeared. Surprisingly, I feel like we've seen everything already. What should I do? Oh, here we go. We're beyond the gate. Those clickers are a little bit much. But we're just gonna have to live with it. What happened? I don't know. It's gotta be a fucking spray. Shit. Spread out. Guard the tower. Guard the tower. They're afraid I'll get to the tower. He can't come out. I don't even care about knowing your names anymore. You guys are a waste of my bullets. I gotta get you fast. There's a guy behind me too. Uh, 
Whoa, where'd they go? Here! <laughs> We've got them! Right over here! Ow! I feel like I'm getting more and more agitated. My god, how many people have we killed? It's really insane. These people have helmets and body armor, but somehow I still managed to get the one up on them. Thank you. You guys should probably stick a little bit closer together. Instead of coming at me in small waves. A little bit sad about the Molotov though, because I really think it only killed one guy. Probably could have killed a few more. Okay. Did I upgrade this already? Yeah, okay. Yup. That was probably another situation where I should have used more trap mines and smoke bombs and all. Trap mines don't really work when you're already in combat though. But for example, it would have been nice to put it behind me so that woman couldn't get me from behind. Going back down again. Okay. Well, it seems like it was some kind of a restaurant, too. Oh, we were here. Yeah, okay. Mm. How are you feeling, Ellie? Your stitches. You're getting shot at every single moment now. Feel your stitches shouldn't be lasting. Okay, if you're so sure that there's another way to escape. This feels like a cell. Try to escape. She's down in the pillars. The pillars? Head down to the beach. You won't miss it. 
She's probably already dead. We're so close. We tried so hard to cover up our bite from years ago, but now we have a new one. It's a little surprising these guys let me live. Even though technically I saved them. You don't have to do this. Oh, I don't even know what Abby's gonna do if she sees Ellie again. I know last time she said, don't let me see you again. <laughs> Please. I don't want you guys to fight. You can choose to be happy. We basically came and ruined their entire ecosystem. We don't know anything about the Rattlers, but we ruined everything. Oh, she's bleeding again. Look at her freaking pants! Soaked! Head to the beach. <sighs> Arguably, we weren't the bad guys here. For this incident. But we still cause a lot of death and destruction. How can you even fight her? You can barely stand. <gasps> Holy. Abby? No. Help me. Please. It's you. This is surreal. I feel like Ellie must be very puzzled that Abby's not even 
putting up a fight. And Lev. That's probably the first time we've seen Azeli that Abby has a person she cares for here. <gasps> this is the intro screen! you leave. I'm not doing this. Oh my god, Ellie. He's not a part of this. You made him a part of this. Okay. Okay. You're forcing someone to fight you by threatening a child. If I get hit on purpose... second to press the square and I didn't press it. Ah! <laughs> 
I'm exhausted. I don't know what to say. We came back. But will Dina welcome me back? I don't think that's a given. For starters, I'm happy that both Ellie and Abby are alive. I truly am. 
but the journey that we took to get here. Oh my god. <sighs> I really don't think it's a given that Dina will welcome me. It's not a given that she's even here. <sighs> Ellie. You were so hell-bent on revenge. Every time we go for revenge, we lose something. If we're lucky, we lose something. If we're unlucky, we lose someone. The three fingers weren't even the biggest of my losses this time. This was something that she felt like she had to do. If she didn't go, I think it would be eating away at her forever. Because at least now, now that we went, even though the cost of it was really very monumental and astronomical, really. If we didn't go to try to find Abby, we never would have had the chance to let her go. And if we didn't do that, we never would have mentally arrived at this point. Because a lot of what's happened in Ellie's journey so far, she's the one reacting to things happening around her, as opposed to her getting to make a choice about things. And her deciding to let Abby go in this encounter is the first time that she's got to make a decision about this. Every other time, she was a reactive participant. She didn't touch any of my stuff. Or rather, she put everything into this room. Is that a carving that Joel did before? He had a lot of those in his house. This is all that's left of the entire house. Would it have been better if I'd stayed? Swallowed up the shame, given them what's left of me. Do I have it to give? Can I offer the scraps now? Gristle and bone chewed up and rotting or will it make them sick corrode their insides poison them i could be in the woods left for the insects to clean until the iron smell is gone until i'm bleached and brittle ready for display yeah if she stayed here it would have felt like to Ellie, to Ellie, it would have felt like a artificial type of happiness, and she would have been an empty shell, a walking corpse. Would it have been correct to stay and give the people I love a corpse of myself?
That's the first time we've seen Joel drawn with eyes. The journey that we took to get here to Ellie, it, it had to be done. Can you even still play? She's not playing properly. If I were to ever lose you, I'd surely lose myself. Drinking. Coffee. Where'd you get that? Uh, those people that came through last week. Oh. A little embarrassed as to what I had to trade to get it, but it's not bad. I had Seth under control. Yeah, I know. And you need to stop harassing Jesse about my patrols. Okay. Uh, Dina. Is she your girlfriend? She, that was just one kiss. It doesn't mean anything. She just, I don't know why she did that. But you do like her. <sighs> so stupid. Look, I have no idea what that girl's intentions are, but. But I do know that she would be lucky to have you. You're such an asshole. I'm not trying to. I was supposed to die in that hospital. My life would have fucking mattered. But you took that from me. If 
somehow the Lord gave me a second chance at that moment, I would do it all over again. I can never forgive you for that. But I would like to try. I like that. See you around. Yep. <clears throat> they loved each other so much. Wow. Remember how the whole time we thought that we argued with Joel on the night of the party and the next day he was killed and we never got to talk or make up or anything. I'm so, so glad our last conversation wasn't that. I'm- I'm so glad. And even thinking back about that, it wasn't even just a one-night thing, because Ellie had known the truth for like a year or so at that point. So they were already really tense like that for quite a while already. But that... That conversation... I can't forgive you. But I would like to try. I think it definitely says something that Ellie is recalling and taking comfort in this memory now. It feels like it's the, the closure that we needed, that we were seeking this whole time. That we already had. We had it, but we weren't ready to accept it as such until we experienced everything that we did up until this point. A lot of this, this revenge mission for Ellie, there's so much overwhelming guilt. Guilt over how she treated Joel, how she never got to 
say sorry, and how he died thinking she never forgave him. Even in the end here, he only got a I would like to try, but that is... That's the best thing he's had all year. Hmm. <sighs> Even though they were... They had their last conversation in such tense terms, the love between them is so strong and obvious that I like to think. It's kind of... Well, it is exactly. It's exactly like a parent and a child having an argument. Yeah, you may say really hurtful words, but at the end of the day, you just know deep down that they... they do love you. And I really, really want to think that Joel knew that about Ellie. And I think he does. I will believe he does. And after Ellie lost her fingers, she can't play the guitar properly anymore. That was one of the most concrete signs. Concrete yet completely intangible. Trace of Joel existing, having existed on this earth. The fact that he taught me how to play guitar. But now, we can't anymore. We even left the guitar there. I don't get the impression we'll ever go back to that house. But, you know, maybe that's a sign that it's time to move on and start grieving and healing. We can't change what's fact. We can't change that Joel's dead and that we never really properly got to say goodbye. Whatever the hell properly saying goodbye means because death is almost always sudden. And even if you know it's coming, I think very, very few of us are ever prepared for it. We can't change that. But what we can change is our attitude and our perspective and just try to work through the hand that we're dealt with. And I'm really glad that both Ellie and Abby are getting that chance. I, um, like, there's so many thoughts flowing through my mind right now. I don't even know where to start, so I'm... I apologize if I'm... <sighs> do I sound really depressed right now? I think I do. <laughs> um... Um, yeah. <sighs> that whole Abby versus Ellie fight was so surreal. I've got to go back and watch it again. Like, ugh. At first, Abby treated me as if I came to rescue her. She was like, come on, let's go over here. There's, there's some boats. And Ellie was rolling along with it too. They both got in their own boats and... Then Ellie remembered Joel's face again and... <sighs> It really just goes back to having to feel like you did something, you know? Does that make sense? It's not really even about like, oh, because everyone knows that getting revenge is kind of dumb because you're not really going to feel happy about it in the end. But more importantly, whether it affects if I feel happy about it or not, I want to know that if I were Ellie, I would want to know that I did the best I could and all that I could to honor Joel's memory, right? So every time she thinks of him, it's like, no, I, I gotta go kill Abby again. I feel like Lev being in that area was really instrumental too, though. It's the first time that Ellie has seen Abby care for another person. Yeah, Abby had friends, but uh, this person, Lev is a kid, and he's clearly vulnerable and hurt. And you could see that Abby was taking care of him directly. I can imagine that it might have been quite reminiscent of herself when she was younger and Joel too. And I, I don't know, man, that whole scene was insane. I'm sure even Ellie must realize how crazy she was being in that she was threatening a kid so that Abby would fight her. Because for some reason, it wasn't enough that she killed Abby. No, she had to do it while Abby was fighting back. I guess because if Abby doesn't fight back, then it'll kind of feel like Ellie is killing a weak, defenseless person. That's not what she came here for. No, I came here to kill my father's murderer who tortured him. Maybe something like that? Probably jumped through a few hoops in reasoning there. That entire scene was just... so entirely uncomfortable, I don't... Ugh. Even sitting here now, I feel very, very uncomfortable. And I can already see why this... this game is so divisive. I feel so battered up, just like Ellie and Abby and everybody in this story. 
Like, I think for sure, this isn't gonna be the story that some people will have wanted to see. It would have been really, really, really easy to see a new story of Joel and Ellie going on a new adventure and they take on new enemies and deepen their bond and they come across obstacles, blah, 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 blah. That would have been so easy and so safe and that would sell millions. But yet, Naughty Dog felt like they wanted to do something radically, radically different from that. It's very risky and no matter what the end result is, like whether it sells well, whether people like it or not, I feel like I can respect that. Anybody who can step out of their comfort zone to try something so radically risky, especially in the AAA, AAA gaming space too, where, you know, bottom line is everything, although mm, I guess for a company of Naughty Dog's caliber, that might not have been as big of a concern. But anyway, my point is they really didn't have to do this, but they did. I respect that. But I also find this game really hard to um, judge. It's really easy to say a game is good when you enjoy playing it, and oh, it was so much fun and it was really entertaining. But for a story like this, do any of those words really describe it appropriately? Probably not. No, this game, the story was very uncomfortable, very unfun. Nothing about it was happy. No. I personally found it to be quite a challenging story too. Challenging in the sense that it challenged my viewpoint. Because you know how tribalism, in groups, out groups, has always been this thing that's come up again and again in this story. I feel like you can even apply it to how players feel. In The Last of Us world, plenty of people do objectively horrible things, heinous things, but we justify it because we spend time with them. And then because we like them, their actions become excusable to us. Easiest example, Joel saving Ellie. Because Joel is someone we like, we accept his decisions. Abby and Ellie, they're the same. Both of them are people that torture and kill people. This is a sequel of a previous game where we already got to know Ellie. Obviously, automatically everyone starts out siding with Ellie. And then they also introduce Abby in such a way that you have five million different reasons to hate her because she killed Joel. But then once we have to play Abby's side of the story, there is an implicit question there. Are you willing to look past the fact that she's not in your in-group? The fact that she killed Joel and see that she has other sides too? I guess what I'm really trying to say is Ellie and Abby, they're really not that different. And the only reason why we side with Ellie is because we know her. And isn't that kind of what the wolves and the scars are doing? I side with the wolves because I'm part of the wolves. I side with the scars because I'm part of the scars. What I found personally kept happening was whoever I played the longest would eventually be the person I sympathize with more. And for example, in the long stretches where we play with Abby, then I would unconsciously or subconsciously or something start thinking that, oh my god, why is Ellie being so crazy and psychotic and just won't let it go? But if I pause and took a step back and try to think of it from Ellie's perspective again, then I realize, oh, you know, of course, she's not being psychotic. She's, she's just so traumatized and she felt so compelled that she needed to do something. And this wasn't just something that happened with Ellie and Abby too. Like for example, towards the end there, I got quite frustrated with Tommy. At the end, he felt like a completely different person who is also hell-bent for revenge just like Ellie. And at the moment, I was like, oh my god, Tommy, what the hell, man? But again, just pausing for a second and taking a step back and thinking about it, Tommy has lost mobility function in his leg, he lost an eye, he lost his sniping ability, he lost his brother, and he lost his wife. And even though the story is centered on Ellie and Abby, psychological changes are happening with other people too. This person literally lost everything. And I mean everything, because of Abby. He doesn't have anything else besides this quest for revenge. And he himself is powerless now too, he can't kill her. He has to do whatever he can in his power to make Ellie want to go after her, even if it includes guilt tripping her and goading her on. Hatred warps people so much to the point that 
I can't even recognize them anymore. But if I look a little bit closer, I can. I can see the shards of the person that was once there. So I feel like if I let my thinking process stop at the oh my god, what the hell part, then it's completely buying into the whole in-group, out-group tribalism stuff, which is what a lot of the characters in this story were doing too, and they couldn't get away from it. And it's so easy to stop there and let yourself be stuck in that cesspool of hate and revenge. Because it's very, very natural, humans being social creatures and wanting to make communities. But making a community sort of implicitly says that there is an in and an out, right? So there's part of the community, and then there's people that are not part of the community. And it's not that I think, like, if you're part of a group, you have this moral duty to care about the other group just because, oh, well, they're not actually bad people too. No, you don't. You can just care about your own group too. But if you care about your own group, if you really care about your own group, you would stop this whole revenge business because it affects your group too. Look at Ellie's quest here. Jesse's dead. Tommy lost an eye. Dina nearly died. And I lost three, two fingers. Look at Abby's group. Everybody from the Salt Lake crew is dead. Yara's dead. Less about being a bigger person. More about giving yourself and the people around you, the people you love, a chance to have a life again. I do wonder what the effects on the story would be if the, the game wasn't laid out this way though. Like, I don't know if it would be a good or a bad thing, but I definitely feel like it would be different. If we started out with Abby, and then grew to love her, and then realized, oh, she's the one that kills Joel, then you'd be torn between Ellie and Abby. But the entire, if you're not my friend, you're my enemy, that sort of effect would be lost. It would just be you being sad because two people you like are in opposition. But overall, this story is just multiple layers more complicated and ambitious than one. Not that, you know, complexity is a measure for goodness, but it is certainly more complex. I thought the first half, at least half, was kind of monotonous though, and there were some pacing issues with the whole story, I feel like. For Ellie's half, it might have been because she was alone a lot of the time, like Jesse and Dina were often not there. No chattering companion meant that a lot of the times we were going from place to place, but it was completely quiet. Like Ellie was just focused on her mission of, okay, I gotta go find this person so I can find out where Abby is. Okay, they don't know. Okay, now I'm gonna go to the next person. Okay, they don't know where she is either. There wasn't really too much for her to um, work with. I remember distinctly thinking that going to the hospital took forever. It took like two hours and nothing happened in between that time, story-wise. I guess it's also because that's not what I've come to expect from Naughty Dog, because they mostly craft very, very linear stories, right? But um, yeah. By comparison, Abby's part was objectively more exciting, I think. I feel like I remember more from Abby's part. And Lev was there too, so we got to watch Abby and Lev grow. And then the last section, like everything after the confrontation at Pinnacle Theater. I thought the confrontation was going to be pretty close to the end, but then we got this whole Santa Barbara section where... I don't think we really cared about this, the Rattlers or the Slaves. It was really... This section designed to make you feel, oh my god, why is this? Why is this still going? Why is Ellie still going? Anyway, though, that part we just breezed through it because what was really important was the ending where we got to see Abby and Ellie meet up again. So it didn't quite feel evenly paced, and I feel like if you took a few hours of fighting out of Ellie's section, it might have helped trim the fat. But I assume they wanted to make a mirrored structure between Abby and Ellie with a day one, day two, day three being roughly the same length. And then this feeling of, oh, when this person's doing this, this other person's actually doing that. So, yeah. I can see why opinions on this story, this game, is really divided overall, and uh, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. If a game invites debate, actual meaningful exchange of viewpoints, you know, not death threats, I feel like it's more interesting than a universally acclaimed story because universally acclaimed things tend to be safe. And going outside the boundaries of safety is where innovation happens, right? But I do kind of feel like this game came out at the worst time possible though, considering the world situation, and a lot of people play video games for 
fun for escapism. I probably wouldn't recommend anyone to play this for fun or escapism. I don't know. I think the gameplay is fun, but the story that goes alongside it. And it's not, this isn't the kind of game where you can ignore the story either. I've actually been personally in quite low spirits all of last month, pretty much, this whole past month. And I can't help but wonder, like, there's a lot of things going on right now, both in the world and, you know, to me personally, but I can't help but wonder if this game is also part of the reason why, because it's just so damn exhausting. Uh, in general, do I think this is worth playing? Absolutely. I can't think of very many games that try to explore the human condition, the human experience, like The Last of Us does. Both games. But considering the situation of the world right now, uh, I don't think I would want to go through the game again, <laughs> at least in the short term. I'm actually quite mentally exhausted. But after all this exhaustion, it's good to see that we have something that kind of resembles a hopeful ending. I can't say good, but it's hopeful. We're at rock bottom and things are going up. Where's Ellie gonna go now? Well, she can do whatever she wants. She's free. Maybe she can go back to Jackson. I assume Dina and JJ went back to Jackson. You know, if she does, she might have to go deal with the whole Tommy stuff again, which... I'll let her think about that. <laughs> As for Abby and Lev, well, they sailed away. And, uh, who knows, maybe they'll come across some horrible people again, but maybe they won't. Even the boat here is in a nicer spot now, with sunshine. It's hopeful. Not in that misty darkness that was the intro screen for the game. But, yeah. Now, hopefully the story about hatred and revenge comes to a close. Yeah, this is a good point to end off. This was Wellens with The Last of Us 2. Thank you so much for joining me on this very arduous journey. And do let me know your thoughts. Did you love this game? Did you hate this game? I await your very civilized comments. <laughs> Alright, thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you all in another place in another time. Bye!